Hey folks, and welcome to this Twilio tutorial video. Now this is the fourth video in our series exploring Twilio programmable voice. In the last video, we learned how to use webhooks to serve Twimmel from a web server. And now that you've got this set up, we can start to build some really unique experiences over the phone. In this video, we're going to learn how to gather user input over the phone by rebuilding one of my favorite fun Twilio projects, the Call the Notes hotline. The Call the Notes hotline was a phone number that you could call and it would play some music from the famous band Hold the Notes. For this video, we'll build a phone hotline that lets you choose your favorite music tracks and play them over the phone. Now we'll be starting with a web server to generate Twimmel when we receive a phone call from Twilio. You can watch the previous video in this series to learn how to get this set up. And if you already have web hooks hooked up to a Twilio phone number, you should be ready to go. I will start by quickly explaining the request response cycle that happens when Twilio uses the gather verb. First, your phone number receives a call and Twilio makes a request to your app just like we did in the last video. Now, if your Twimmel has a gather in it, Twilio will wait for the user to put in their input. Now, after the user has given some input, Twilio will make another request to your webhook. This request will also include parameters containing the user input and some other things, and you can dynamically respond to these to create Twimmel for Twilio to respond. This information could come in two forms. The first option is to use DTMF tones, dual tone multi-frequency. These are the beep bop sounds that you may have heard if you've ever used an old school push button telephone. And if you've ever been on a phone and had to press a number to reach a certain department or explain why you're calling, then you've probably used DTMF tones. Let's implement this now. In my code editor, I have a simple app that responds with Tumor that says hello from the server. Let's change this. First, we'll start by creating a gather verb. We also want to specify the type of input we are trying to gather. We'll use DTMF. Now, we'll also add a nested say within this gather. This is the prompt that the user will hear before they input digits. Now we place the say inside the gather because it can then be interrupted by the user input. You may not want to have the user have to listen to all of the options before they can select one. Okay, now we've handled the first request response cycle. We tell Twilio to gather some digits and Twilio waits for the user to respond. When the user responds, Twilio will make another request to our web application. Now by default, Twilio will make this request to the same URL. Let's change this. We'll add another parameter to our gather verb called action. Now just like the action parameter on a HTML form, this URL specifies where Twilio should go with the user's response. We can use an absolute or a relative URL. Now I'm going to use a relative URL pointing to the same URL we had before plus slash results. So now that we've done that, we need to add another route or route for my American friends. And we'll have this new route point to the URL slash results, just like we specified in our action earlier. So Twilio will make a second request to our server this time at our slash results route. Now we need to prepare to read the body of that request. By default, Twilio will send these digits as URL encoded parameters. Now in this particular web framework, we can use the middleware called body parser to access these parameters. Now we can get these digits from the body of the request coming from Twilio. Now, once we have these, we can use traditional conditional programming to respond with the relevant Twimmel. Here, I've used a simple switch statement to reply back saying what digits was pressed. If they don't reply with a valid choice, I'll just repeat the gather and give them a chance to answer again. All right, let's pause and test what we've got working so far. Now, if you're not sure how to get this working, check out the last video where we used ngrok to expose our local development server to Twilio. But if you've already got that set up, give your phone number a call. Now that we have this working, let's change things up. Remember when I said that there were two ways that you could gather information from the user over the phone? Now that we have set up DTMF tones, let's take a look at the other option, speech to text. And this makes it possible to gather spoken inputs from a user on the phone. Not too much has to change for us to start collecting speech. Back in our code, 
we'll now change the input type of the gather from DTMF to speech. We will also need to change the prompt. Let's have them say the name of their favorite Hall & Oates song. If you're following along, feel free to use your favorite artist songs. Now, when we are dealing with speech, things get a little less precise. Now, while speech recognition has gotten so much better over the years, it's not yet a perfect science, but we can increase our chances by giving our speech to text engine a few clues. And we can do this by adding a few attributes to our gather. Here are five attributes that we can add to the gather to improve the speech recognition results. Let's start by adding a localized language. I speak English with a British accent, so en-gb works for me. Now there is a long list of languages that you can use, and I've dropped a link in the description below with some of the languages that we support. We can also give Twilio clues as to what type of speech to expect, and choose a speech model tailored to that. We have three options, default, numbers and commands, or phone call. Let's use phone call because we aren't collecting any numbers. We can also add some hints. These hints are words or phrases that we expect the user to say. For the Call and Notes hotline, we can add the titles of some of the more popular songs. I'm going to stick to three for now. Man Eater, You Make My Dreams, and Out of Touch. Last but not least, we can set a speech timeout. Now this tells Twilio how much silence in seconds to expect at the end of the user's input. We can also use the option Auto. With this option, Twilio will wait for a pause in the caller's speech. However, if you are expecting longer inputs, you might want to use some seconds here. Now, there are a few other attributes that you can also set, such as a profanity filter, enhanced speech recognition, and the option to receive partial results. Check out the documentation on the gather verb to find out more. But for now, let's finish this off. Now that we have specified speech as the input method, we need to tailor our results route to handle a transcript rather than digits. Instead of digits, we'll receive two different parameters in the request from Twilio. Speech results, that contains the transcript of the call to speech, and confidence, which gives us a confidence score between zero and one of the transcription results. Now we won't be using this today, but it can be very helpful when you're debugging. Now, we can check if the speech results contains the title of one of these songs. For simplicity, I'll just be using an if-else statement to look for a title that matches any one of the songs, and then play the correct song in response. I can use the play verb to play an mp3 hosted at a specific URL. A little side hint, you can use Twilio assets to hold your mp3 audio if you're using your favourite artist. Alright, now we're ready to give this a go. Once again, pause this video and give it a try. You should be able to say the name of the song you want to hear, and then listen to it. Awesome! Now you can dynamically control the Twimmel that you create based on input from the user. There is so much that you can begin to do from here, so let your creativity run wild. I do want to point out that for collecting lots of user input, you might want to consider Twilio Studio. It helps you handle state management and simplifies the process of conditional routing. Check it out, it's an amazing tool and you can prototype really, really complex flows really quickly. But that's for another video. Now, thank you so much for sticking with me on this series. We have so much more to explore. So stick around as we learn much more complex things that you can begin to build with Twilio Voice.